So it turns out, if you have a coil in your wire at all, in your circuitry, say we have some sort of battery and it's connected to some sort of coil, there will be some resistance just because of the wires. When you hook the circuit up, current's going to flow. But the nature of the coil there, as soon as this, before it was hooked up, there was no current flowing through it, so it had no magnetic field. So it had no flux. You hook the battery up, current starts to flow. Well, current flowing through that coil creates a magnetic field, so the flux has suddenly changed. Well, the nature of the coil is to oppose that change in flux. And so that coil induces its own current to try to oppose that change. So we say that this acts as a back EMF. It induces a voltage within itself which opposes the current coming from the battery. We call this self-inductance because it's inducing a voltage in itself because of the current flowing from the battery. Now it turns out all circuitry has some sort of self-inductance to it, even if it doesn't have a coil. And that's why they actually, if you, read, if you ever bother to read the little instruction manuals on any electronic appliance, it tells you to turn it off before unplugging it. And that's because what happens if you unplug it while it's turned on, it creates a back EMF to try to keep current flowing. It was perfectly happy with the current it had. It tries to keep it going. So what happens, I've actually been the uh, victim of this. I was unplugging my laptop to bring it to class one day, and why on earth would I turn it off? Because, you know, it takes 20 minutes to load. So it's just unplugging it, and I grabbed it just right that I touched the prongs and I got myself a nice little shocker because it was inducing a current back through me to try to oppose that change in flux. And I felt it. It, it wasn't a huge deal, but I certainly felt it. <coughs> Any coil type setup in a circuit we call an inductor. is it induces a voltage, which then creates a current to oppose the change that's going on. The symbol we use for inductance, for our inductor, is a capital L. His eye is already taken. I is already being used for other purposes, yes. <laughs> Turns out, the inductance of an inductor The basic equation is this. It depends upon the number of turns you have. We have the flux and the current flowing through it. Now this equation is a little deceptive. I mean, for resistors and capacitors, remember those, the resistance, the capacitance depended on how it was made. You can go to, say, Radio Shack and buy inductors that have a set value. So realistically, the value of the inductor should not depend upon the current. If we look at a solenoid, which is basically what that coil is, flux, we know, would be the magnetic field through it times its area. But the magnetic field through a solenoid depends upon the number of turns, how long it is, how much current is flowing through it, Turns out that flux term always incorporates current. The current cancels. So though this equation implies current has a role, it doesn't in terms of determining the value of the inductor. For a solenoid, our value of our inductor depends upon number of turns, depends upon the cross-sectional area and how tall it is, lowercase l being the length of your solenoid. Units, units are kind of hairy. 
We call the result, resulting units a Henry. We use a capital H to represent it. So if you go get an inductor, it could be a millihenry. It could be 10 millihenrys. I uh, imagine someone named Henry. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this Henry, so I'm not sure. But I imagine that <laughs> somebody. So this coil has some sort of inductance, L. The net effect of an inductor in a DC circuit, so we're talking direct current, we're talking battery here, the net effect of an inductor in the current, sorry, in the circuit, if we graphed the current, the actual net current in the circuit versus time, the inductor is always trying to oppose that increase of current. It doesn't want the current to increase. But the inductor can never be 100% successful. If it was able to create a back EMF large enough to actually oppose that increase in current and stop the current from flowing, well, the flux would not be changing and the inductor would stop doing anything. And current would start to flow again. So the net result, the net result in our circuit is that the inductor causes the current to increase slowly. Now, the term slowly is a relative term. Basically, the inductor does not allow the current to jump to its maximum value immediately. The current is not immediately a max. It will reach a maximum value. but it won't immediately reach that. The inductor slows the rate at which current increases with time. So you can think of an inductor would be like a surge protector. It's going to keep current from increasing. It would be your grandpa interrupters in your bathrooms and your kitchens. Kirchhoff's loop rule still applies here. Whatever the battery puts in, the inductor and the resistor between the two of them have to take out. Initially, the current is zero. For that split second, the inductor is successful in not letting current flow. That means initially the voltage drop across it, the resistance of the circuit is zero. So that means the inductor has the entire voltage drop. As time goes on, current starts to flow, the voltage drop across the resistor gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The current starts changing or changes less and less and less. The slope decreases. The voltage drop across an inductor depends upon the inductance and the rate at which the current is changing, DIDT. If the current in the circuit is not changing at all, the inductor has no voltage drop across it. It is not creating that back EMF. So as time goes on, the voltage drop across the inductance decreases, the voltage drop across the resistor increases, and will increase until eventually the resistor has the entire voltage drop, which means current is no longer changing. If current is not changing, then the inductor has no voltage drop across it, and so the maximum current ends up being the battery voltage over the resistance in the circuit. So the voltage drop across our inductor depends on inductance and the rate at which current is changing. If we have 
current flowing through the inductor and we disconnect it through the battery, it will actually keep current going, not indefinitely, but it will basically call it discharging. It will cause current to continue flowing. That's why I got shocked with my laptop. Inductors, as long as they have current flowing through them, they are storing energy and that energy can be used to make current flow. The amount of energy an inductor stores depends upon the inductance value and how much current it flows. Inductors are a little backwards. It is completely possible for the voltage drop across the inductor to be zero, but the energy to be a maximum value. Okay. If the current's not changing, then the voltage drop is zero. But just if it has current, so if it's at a steady state current, so the current's not changing, but there is current, the energy will be a maximum value. It's a little backwards that way. It seems a little counterintuitive. Yeah, but when L is zero, I don't know. L is never zero. I always, well, in the way that you just said, it's the energy is stored in the magnetic field. Yes, exactly. It's the magnetic field itself that is the source of that energy.